Hi guys, Emily here from the Academy and I just got my hands on this afternoon's Leap and Cert Biology exam um, which I am absolutely delighted with. A really really nice paper, really accessible um, to all students and um, looks at um, a broad range of topics. Um, if we take a quick look through it now, um, I suppose when students opened the paper first, a really nice uh, question to settle in as predicted um, with their, their food topic for 5%. Um, I suppose within that we had some trickier questions. Um, in part C, for example, we were asked to give one way in which phospholipids differ from triglycerides. So for that H1, students want to be able to mention the phospholipid will have um, two fatty acids whereas the triglyceride would have three and um, we've got five percent um, for scientific method five percent for the digestive system enzymes appeared for 15 percent which is really really nice and then a combination of photosynthesis and respiration for 15 percent and as expected we had excretion on our paper in section c for seven and a half percent and then cell division for another seven and a half percent. So I suppose there are some of the things that we really, really expect to see today, and um, students will be delighted when they when they open their paper and um, see those. Um, so if we keep going through then onto question two, we have our scientific method. Um, so that did appear on the paper last year, and we can see there in part C, um, this might have caused some difficulty for students where they're asked to outline the steps of the scientific method um, that follow uh, the design of an experiment. So they'll want to mention the results, the data, um, the analysis, the conclusion, repeating the experiment, um, and perhaps how that might um, develop into a theory or a law. Um, question three then, a really, really nice question on the digestive system. Um, I suppose one part there that might have caused difficulty would be F, where we're asked to give two functions of symbiotic bacteria. So we could mention how they'll kill harmful bacteria or they'll produce vitamins B and K. If we keep moving then, question four, um, we look at the phloem and xylem for 5% and then question five, a really nice um, opportunity um, for students to um, pick up some marks in a true and false. So everyone should have been able to attempt um, every single um, one of those from, from A to G there. Question six then, we're looking at our definitions. So throughout the paper, we see loads of definitions and a lovely opportunity for any student who has um, studied those inside out um, from a mix of, of topics there. Um, I suppose we can see there systole and diastole, um, a trickier one perhaps. So uh, the systole is going to be for contraction um, and diastole for resting in the cardiac cycle. Question seven then, we have our genetic engineering and then we're on to section B. So I suppose section B was um, a part of the paper that I was particularly happy with um, and it's something that we've prayed lots of in class and I mentioned lots throughout the year um, to uh, my six years here. So um, question eight, um, we have the isolating DNA from plant tissue for 15% and we're asked to describe how you could um, isolate it from a named plant tissue. So really important that you tell the examiner your chosen plant tissue, whether that's um, kiwi, etc., and then give your bullet points. So perhaps you mentioned how you used the salt, um, the washing up liquid, you blended it for three seconds, you filter it, you use your protease, you're going to use a glass rod. So going through each of those in your bullet points. The examiner also provides students an opportunity to draw and label a diagram. So perhaps anyone struggling with their bullet points could have drawn points and um, marks um, by using their opportunity with the diagram. Question nine then, again, as expected, and we talked loads about this um, here in day school, so really, really delighted with this, um, our enzyme mobilization. So again, the examiner did give the question a nice gentle start by asking us to explain the term enzyme. And then in part B, I were asked to name the enzyme or the cell. So they gave students the, the opportunity to mention either the yeast or to uh, mention the sucrase, the enzyme in the yeast. Part II then, I suppose, reading the question very, very carefully here because there is ultimately two parts to this experiment. Describe the procedure you used to immobilise the cell to trap the, the enzyme. So we want to mention the sodium alginate and the calcium chloride. So they're going to be really, really important um, in getting those marks. And again, the examiner has provided us with the opportunity to draw um, the diagram to, to gather more marks. In part II, um, I were asked then to describe the application, so the use of the immobilised enzyme. So that's the second part of this experiment and we want to mention the sucrose um, and the glucose test strips and that we could mention there also our control being the free yeast. So two particularly nice experiment questions there and again the opportunity to use diagrams is really generous um, for students. 
Question 10 then, um, again, we were ready um, and expecting to see one of the, the plant experiments. So again, the examiner um, wins students in with the dormancy definition and advantage of dormancy for plants. And then we're looking at um, to investigate the action of digestive enzymes in germinating seeds. So again, we're provided with um, the opportunity to describe the steps and draw our diagram. Um, so a very, very nice question there for students. Okay, and hopefully um, most students will be able to answer all three there. If we move on then to section C um, on our paper, uh, first of all, we met um, plants and we had some of our, um, our different chapters there mixed within that. And then question 12, we move on to our ecology. So um, a really fair ecology question. Um, we're given the uh, food web, we're asked to pull a food chain from it. Um, and we're asked just in part uh, C, V, I, I to name the type of diagram um, that may be used to indicate the relative size. So students aren't even asked to draw the pyramid of numbers, just um, name it. Question 13 then, we see a mix of our photosynthesis and respiration. Uh, there's no uh, scheme here of, of either or, which um, I suppose can often confuse students. So students are asked really clear, um, nice questions. Um, on the on the paper here. So 13a as well, um, a nice introduction to the question we're asked to explain metabolism and differentiate between um, anabolic and catabolic. So straight away, 2.25% there just for our definitions. Question 14 then, we're looking at a mix of um, bacteria, fungi and viruses. So again, a nice fair mix of questions there. And question 15 then, I suppose the anticipated um, genetic cross. So a really nice genetic cross. We have seen questions like this before and we have a mix of um, incomplete dominance in there as well. So when students can identify that it's part of the cross is has incomplete dominance and um, they're good to go and we're told that the genes are not linked. So there's no sex linkage here. So once you're able to draw out your, your five step plan for that, I think students um, have, have really enjoyed that question there. Um, and then part C, we're looking at evolution. In question 16, then we've got a choice of A, B and C and D. And we've got the male reproductive system, the female reproductive system. We've got um, our plant responses and our human defence system. So a really nice, generous mix there. And then question 17, um, part A, the examiner revisits enzymes. So a really nice opportunity for students um, to pick up more marks here. We're given the graph on the um, pH activity. I suppose IV is a part there that might cause um, some difficulty for some students with um, the amylase acts on starch, lipase acts on lipids and protease acts on proteins. So um, we're asked to give the products of each enzyme. So that there does link back to our, to our food nicely. Um, and then we're looking at our um, fungus. So I think the rhizopus, that was another question that we talked a lot about in class to draw the large label diagram of the rhizopus. So a lot of our students really, really happy with that one there. Um, and one of the last things <coughs> that we did mention here um, in day school. If I look then at part C of that question, again, students really, really happy um, with the excretion question. We're very clearly straightforward um, question here with to draw a large label diagram of the nephron. So sometimes, again, if we're given the diagram, that can cause some um, confusion. So students are set off um, to draw their own there. And then our last part, again, as expected, we had um, mitosis for seven and a half percent and no um, shocks here. So a really, really nice paper that we had this afternoon. Students uh, generally really happy with it. And I think that um, there was no surprises um, really in it at all. So well done guys on completing your Leave Insert Biology Exam 2024.